Okay, who's more confusing? My takes on the Minnesota Wild or the Minnesota Wild themselves? Minnesota continues to roll, but will Billy G roll with this team past the trade deadline or are moves on the horizon? As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Royal Credit Union, Livia, Graham Belt, and Jim Beam. This is Season 5, Episode 217. If you guys are anything like me, you love shopping, but more importantly, you love shopping for your favorite Minnesota sports apparel. Well, Soda Stick has you covered. They have unique, one-of-a-kind sports apparel that comes out for a limited time. Whether you're a fan of the Timberwolves, Twins, Minnesota Wild, Minnesota Vikings, or just sports in general, Soda Stick has you covered. Don't forget you can toss down Bar Down Beauties at checkout for 15% off all your purchases. And don't forget customized jerseys. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company Incorporated. Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? We're back. Bar Down Beauties, episode 216, 217. 217, Kirsten. I'm Jesse Pierce, writer for NHL.com. She's Kirsten Kroll, in-house arena for PWHL and your Minnesota Wild, amongst many other things. 217 is the episode, Kirsten, just to be clear. I was incorrect earlier. Oh, yeah, I see that now. It is 217. I don't know. Everything's (laughs) a blur to me at this point. (laughs) Um, you know, exciting weekend for your Minnesota Wild. A couple of late night games, a couple of late night showdowns, a couple of late night wins. We're going to get to all of that. And then in the second segment, we are actually checking in on college hockey with the best college hockey team to ever exist in the entire world. The Gopher men's hockey squad with mm-hmm. Bryce Brodzginski. I know a conversation that Kirsten just loves to have each year. Well, it's been a while since I've won a national championship, wow. so don't know if I can say they're the best to ever exist. Wow. Remind me how many banners St. Cloud's hung. We can talk mm. about how many championships <laughs> the Gophers have won in comparison to every other college hockey team in the country. Mm-hmm. If you want to have that conversation and open that In case that you door. want to know, this is, it's, it's our favorite argument. One of our many arguments I believe we have throughout the course of a season, but that's what makes us the Bardown Beauties. That's what makes us fun different i think we're probably both on the same page though kirsten last week we claimed the minnesota wild were back now we were coming off a very emotionally high win against the vancouver canucks where we saw minnesota pot 10 now they went on and lost to winnipeg didn't hate the loss frankly i didn't think they played terribly i kind of expected that to happen but they have since won excuse me two straight they are seven one and one in their past nine Kaprizov's got a point streak going. bold. He's got seven goals in his past eight. Eric Sinek, who was hurt in the Seattle game, uh, but is expected to be okay. He's having a career year. How are we feeling? Are are we still confident that the Minnesota Wild are back? Like, I get nervous saying it out loud, but, man, they're playing some damn good hockey. To be fair, I never said they were back. I said I've <laughs> liked the way that they've played. You said they're back. So. you gotta, you got to be definitive in your statement sometimes, so I can go one way or another, but... If, I don't. They're playing really, really good right now. They are playing really good. I'm just confused because you said you didn't think that they were going to make the playoffs last week. I still week. don't. Still. I still. So don't how can think... they be back then? Because they're back to the level that we thought they were. Right. Like last week, it was they're back to the mediocrity. Maybe. Right. I think that was the stance that I took. But like, it's just. It's a. I hate it. I hate watching it because it's just. I don't know what to make of the team. I continue to not know what to make of the team. They are still six points back from a wild card spot right now currently occupied by the Nashville Predators with 68 points. Um, but they are also behind St. Louis. St. Louis has a game in hand. And guess who they play this week, Kirsten? They play Nashville and St. Louis on the road. So it's yeah. going to be a big week. It is going to be a big week. I was going to say, too, you confuse me just as much as this team does. I never know. I'm just trying to, you know, stir the pot a little bit, stir I the know. conversation. I um, know you are. No, I'm loving the way they're playing right now. I'm very confident as they head into St. Louis and Nashville. Um, Hopefully Nashville can also have the showing like they did against Dallas when they had to cancel, as Russo tweeted, when they had to cancel their trip to the Sphere to watch U2 because they were embarrassed by Dallas 9-2. So let's have another one of those games. Ooh, I did. I missed that one. That's a... 
I did it. I loved it. I thought it was so funny. But Nashville's your squad, I thought. Like your second tier well, squad. Well, I choose the wild over Nashville. So yeah, when it comes down tier. to the two, I go for the wild, especially when things are as tight right now as they are. Um, you know, let's talk about why things are going so well. Let's start with that top line, which we talked about last year. First of all, are you okay? Were you very concerned kind of in a corner when Jules Erickson left the game with a potential injury? Um, I had some choice words. I sent you some texts. Um, wasn't happy. <laughs> no. Was not happy. But I was relieved. I didn't panic too much because, to be honest, I didn't see it in real time. I saw the recaps after because I was in St. Mm. Cloud that night. So I wasn't, you know, I watched part of the game, didn't see the Eck injury in real time, went on Twitter, saw the news, immediately was like, WTF. And then... <laughs> Saw also the follow-ups, like, okay, he's expected to be fine. So I was like, okay. So it's honestly for the best that I didn't see it in real time because I probably, my level of unhinged would have been through the roof. I mean, that I could see that. I think everybody's level of unhinged. He is having a hell of a year. Uh, so fun to watch him. We talked a lot about him in last week's episode, so I don't want to harp too much on it. Practice was canceled today, so I don't have an injury update on him. Uh, injury updates just to clear the air there. Expected Felino and Zach Bogosian to come back before the March 8th trade deadline with Pat Maroon, who's been out for a bit yet, expected to come back after that March 8th trade deadline. Let's switch gears quick to the deadline, Kirsten, with the Minnesota Wild playing as well as they are, with them seemingly closing in on making a playoff push here. I mean, they're playing, again, good hockey. They are getting the points that are needed. They're controlling their destiny for sure. Do you think this changes Bill Guerin's approach? Now, a couple weeks ago, I think we were all like, you know what, just sell, whatever, or just don't do anything. It just You don't need to try to make this team better because they are what they are. But we all know Bill Guerin, and we know how competitive he is. We know he's, his tongue is probably salivating right now. Do you think we're going to see some movement before that March or on that March 8th trade deadline for the Minnesota Wild as Bill Guerin looks to maybe help this team truly make it into the playoffs? Yes, I do think we will. I've kind of had that feeling all season long, too, especially as it's gotten closer. I don't know. I've always said I don't know what it's going to be, but just knowing Bill Guerin and his style, he's never one to just sit back and not do anything. We always have said he's always plotting, always scheming, something in the back of his mind. If I had to say right now, any wild players, I know the two names that are really speculated right now, the Deweys. Mm -hmm. um, I would say probably Duhaim is more likely to be dealt somewhere than Connor Dewar, um, personal opinion. But if I were to see anyone go, it would probably be one of those two. Dewar is a restricted free agent coming up this offseason. Duhaim an unrestricted free agent. So odds of keeping him in general, probably not great if you're expecting to have him walk in the offseason anyway. You're right. That's collateral right there. Pat Maroon was another name that was tossed around. Do you think the injury has hurt that speculation or do you because again he is a guy that epitomizes a playoff run right he's a guy that you want I think that's why Bill Guerin went and got him in the offseason was to say hey this guy knows how to how to win and I think he's a, a coveted factor a coveted role in a lot of teams do you think Patty slash big rig slash Patrick is a, a potential continues to be a potential for trade bait no I <laughs> have always had the thought again I'd keep being like I always thought I don't I don't know why it keeps coming out of my mouth like that but I have had the feeling because the speculation has been going around for a while I haven't thought he's going anywhere I felt he's sticking around and I think definitely the injury he has had not being showcased not playing in the weeks that he's been out I think that definitely hurts the chances of him being dealt somewhere else and also Bill Guerin went in the offseason picked him up signed him to Minnesota one, if we're taking the personal player perspective into consideration, he has a family. He's got kids. I don't think after already making one move earlier this season that he's going to want to move uproot his family a second time. That's kind of a personal feeling that I have just kind of trying to put myself in a player's position. Mm -hmm. But also, too, I don't see Bill Guerin wanting him to be a player when he went out and got him to be another one kind of at the trade deadline to be more expendable. The only I, I honestly go so back and forth on it because you're right. I think he's one of Billy's guys, right? And we know how Billy feels about his guys. And I think mm -hmm. Pat Maroon is that, which is fine. The reason I could see him being tradable is because teams would want a player of his caliber. And he's had a really good year up until yeah. the injury. I think he surprised all of us by playing in areas and, and getting some goals and showing more skills than I think we anticipated him to. So I could see some teams maybe coming and knocking and, and looking for that and, and looking for his veteran presence. 
But yeah, ultimately, I think him being one of Billy's guys, and especially, you know, on the flip side, if Garen thinks this team is destined to make the playoffs, then yeah, you want him on your team. So Bill's not going to give that up. So it's very, I hate to be so wishy-washy, but I am. I'm so like being here, being here, being here, being here, because I could see it really shaking out either way. But you're right. I think the injury probably hurts any teams that were possibly looking. The Deweys, I would agree. Uh, Mark andre Fleury was another name that was briefly discussed. It sounds like in a recent conversation he had with Joe Smith of The Athletic that Fleury does, in fact, want to be here. And again, I think we've talked about it. That has to be with the family. You bring up the family aspect, Kirsten, and how you know you don't want to uproot. And Mark andre Fleury is a family guy. So that's where mm-hmm. I've always kind of stayed steadfast. I don't think Fleury is, is going on where unless he really wants to go somewhere, right? It's, it's Mark andre Fleury's decision to make. Yeah, and I think Bill Guerin even also mentioned that, like at the trade deadline, it's it's his call. I think people have kind of put words in his mouth for him all season long, um, just kind of speculating, like at the trade deadline, Flurry is going to want to go play somewhere else. He has nothing else left to prove in his career. He has what right. three Stanley Cups? He's won multiple Vesna trophies. He he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Like he has nothing left to prove. I think he's really happy in Minnesota. And also, too, he said that, like, this is his team. So I don't think that was really an option. I didn't see it that way anyways leading up to this point. But also, too, take this as you will. I have heard he also kept is keeping his kids in Minnesota for school next year. So take that as you will. I don't know what to make of that, but the plot is what I have heard. The plot thickens. Uh, You know, the other thing, excuse me, pardon me. Caden's just going to chime in. But Mark Andre Fleury has made the playoffs every year of his career. He doesn't know what that's like, so maybe there's something there. Who knows? I can understand if there were. Speaking of Mark Andre Fleury, I want to get into the goaltending tandem and how I was critical last week, and they heard me as they tend to do. And now we're back with them playing some pretty dang good. Uh, excuse me. I, why do I keep saying pretty dang good? That's like my phrase of the week. Like it's my thing. Like they're playing some dang good hockey. Uh, but the goalies are good. But first. Marc-Andre Fleury, certified Swifty. How are you today? We had a lot of people who immediately let the Bar Down Beauties know that Marc-Andre Fleury quoted Taylor Swift postgame saying, just shake it off. Were you very excited to know that there is another confirmed Swifty in the room? I'm just happy. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. Marc-Andre Fleury, great guy, respects women. <laughs> he loves Taylor Swift. So, I mean... <laughs> It's just confirming Respects everything. women? Like, oh, like, I guess we're, did we, were we worried that he disrespected women? No, like, we weren't. But, like, there's, like, this whole thing, like, and I'm maybe going to stir the pot by, like, saying this, but in the community, the Swifty community, there's a lot of men very vocal about not liking Taylor Swift, her ruining football, blah, blah, blah. So I feel like it really says a lot about a man when he's like, yeah, like, Taylor Swift references her, like, even if you're on the side of, like, Brock Faber, where he's like, I don't listen to her, but I definitely respect her success. Like, it says a lot about a man the way he talks about Taylor Swift. So that's why I said Flurry respects women. <laughs> I get it. All right. That makes sense. Like, it's right? Just... <laughs> yes. I get, I get what you're saying. Thank we you. We needed to clarify that. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and the continued confirmation of Jonas Brody and being a Swifty <sighs> also carries on. I apologize. I need to publicly apologize to Kirsten for not alerting her of the further confirmation that the Minnesota Wild made on their social media. This is like the fourth time now. And everyone's like, is he though? And I'm like, it's, they've <laughs> tweeted about it like four times now. Like this is, a, God, I just need to, I need to like pick his brain about this. He, he needs to come on the podcast. That's all. And it just, it needs to just once and for all, get it out there. I just need to know his favorite song. Yeah. Like there's a whole, I have so many questions. Yeah. I, I don't know why I still just struggle. I, We've been told many you times. You asked him, and he said, yeah, him. I like Taylor Swift. He literally yeah. told you, yeah, I like Taylor Swift. And I'm just like, huh. Hmm. Why is it so hard for you to believe? I don't I don't know. I don't he know why my brain. told you to your face. And also, just, the Wild have tweeted about it so many times. It just feels too perfect. Maybe that's I mean, it. he's a perfect man. What do you, <laughs> what do you want to, <laughs> what do you want him to say? <laughs> wow. Um, going back to the goaltending Philip Gustafson looked absolutely phenomenal in the win in Edmonton on Friday night before Flurry goes. Flurry has won four of his past five starts, allowing two goals or fewer in three of those four. Philip Gustafson made 41 saves in easily one of his best games of the season. 
Um, <clears throat> again, though, there's the problem of consistency. This is why I'm so inconsistent in my analysis is because this team is so damn inconsistent and I don't know what to do. Yeah, you can confuse we, me more than this team does, quite can, frankly. Can we, but can we guarantee Philip Gustafson can continue to perform this way? I guess that's where is your concern level with that? Because coming into the year, I think we were all like apprehensive if he can, you know, duplicate what he did last year and do it with more games. Now, obviously, he's been injured a little bit this year. There's been injuries throughout the team, which obviously changed things in front of you as a goalie. I, I haven't seen enough of the good to believe that Philip Gustafson is going to be like this to round out the rest of the regular season, I guess. I think as of late, I have seen more of the good from him. And I think a lot of that is to do, if I am to speculate, he probably is feeling more healthy than he was after coming back from that injury. Because we had discussed we didn't think he was fully healed from what it was. At this point, I think he's finding his groove again. Like, I have more confidence in Marc-Andre Fleury and him performing well night and night. Like, it's been a really good year for Fleury, I think. Like, there's been a, a couple rough starts, but for the most part, I think he's really found a good groove because he's had to. Again, when Gus was out, I mean, he was the guy and he stood up to that task. And not that I'm surprised because he's still Marc-Andre Fleury, but again, he's on that tail end of of his career. I just – but I then I don't know if that means – Who's your number one? If you had to name a number one, are you saying Philip Gustafson is your number one? No, I would say with the way Flurry's been this season, I would probably say Flurry. I'm more confident. I agree in that by saying I feel better about Flurry because Gus has been inconsistent this season. But I think as of late, he's, like I mentioned, finding his groove again. But I still have more confidence in Flurry. Like, I feel the team, and I, you know, this, I'm going to go into this week trying to find out the answer. I feel the team thinks Gus is number one and Flurry's number two. I don't know if they're viewing it as a direct 50 50 tandem, maybe more so lately, because they are playing that way. But again, there's been a ton of back to backs as well. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Marc Andre Fleury as my number one as well. I don't think Gus is my number one. He hasn't been my number one for most of the year. So, what do you can't guys wait think? till he calls you out on that. <laughs> he does love to do that. Sorry. I, I nothing nothing against you. I just I've seen more out of Mark Andre to say, hey, I think, I think you're that's kind of fair. a clear cut. I think it's fair. I just your goalie criticism is funny. <laughs> I don't know why. We all know I have no skill in goaltending. I couldn't even get up on the pad. So yeah, I, I your really, knee? <laughs> it's almost better. It's getting there. We're rounding the corner of healing. So I'm oh, proud God. to. I'm on. Uh, it's more of a day to day situation, I think, versus mm-hmm. a week to week, which it prior mm-hmm. was because we're two weeks into this now. So that's good. We're we're going to start practicing with the team tomorrow. It's it's going to get better. We appreciate that. Cool. Thank you for your concern. Well, tomorrow's uh, a game day, so you can't really practice with the team tomorrow. Yeah, no, that's how I'm going to practice. Like, I'm going to get my reps in with the interviews, mm. you know, work my way into uh, the inside yeah. of the scrums. Yep. It's yep. it's what I do. Um, before we get to the week ahead with your Minnesota, before we get to Bryce Brodzinski and chat a little bit of gopher and college hockey and more about Brock Faber, too, of course, um, I want to talk about Matt Zuccarello. I feel like he's kind of... I don't want to say an unsung hero. I think everybody knows what Matt Zuccarello is capable of, but you go back Saturday's game against Seattle four assists. He has 50 points in 49 games this year. Um, He had 67 points in 78 games last year. He's got 11 goals, 39 assists this season. Matt Zuccarello, Minnesota continues to just squeeze the best juice out. I don't want to call him a lemon. I don't mean to say it that way, but they do. They're squeezing the very best of him out in his waning <laughs> sounds like he's a dog about to get put down in his waning years but like I don't know what it is I do think Matt Zuccarello's kind of been underrated a little bit this year he hasn't gotten the praise that you're giving Kaprizovs and Boldies and X but he's been such a dominant force and one who's been healthy too for the majority of the season to be fair I don't think Boldy's been praised this season. He's been heavily mm-hmm. criticized because he's been very yeah. inconsistent all year long. I would say Zuccarello, maybe he has not gotten the praise he deserves because he's been that consistent. Like night in, night out, yeah. he, for the most part, does everything right. So I guess it's not as noticeable. Um He's been there, maybe not as big of a scorer as we've seen from him in the past, but being there helping make plays with the assists, he's been there all season long. Um, So definitely, I think it's gone a little unnoticed just because we haven't seen, like, when we've seen bad games, like I mentioned, from Boldy, it's noticed. With Zuccarello, Mm -hmm. it's just, he's just there. I mean, not like, I say that kind of sounded bad, saying like he's just there. No, he's been doing 
the right things consistently. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably a really good point. I think it is. It's just a consistent, which it's funny because I go back to the beginning of the year and nobody was consistent outside of Brock Faber and Jewel Erickson X. So I will mm-hmm. criticize Zuki a little bit there because he was in that grouping of like, hey, freaking do something. Yeah. At the beginning, um, he was quiet. Yeah. Like, and the, everybody was, right? I mean, it wasn't mm-hmm. just him, certainly. But I don't know. I just feel like, you know, I don't know. We've talked much about Zuccarello and kind of what he's done not just on the line with Kirill Kaprizov either, obviously being moved to a second line and getting things going there. So it's it's kind of exciting to see he's having another really, really strong season, which I'll admit it, coming into this year, I was like, you know what? I think Zuccarello is finally going to fall off the cliff. He's going to get hurt. He's going to be, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was wrong. I was. Wow. Bleh. That's big of you. I know. I was wrong. Damn it. hate that hate when that happens. Uh, let's take a peek at the week ahead before we take a break and get to Bryce Brodzinski. Kirsten, we already predicted the game for tomorrow, Tuesday slash today, against Carolina Hurricanes at St. Paul. Then they head to Nashville on Thursday. They are at St. Louis on Saturday. First of a back-to-back before they come back home against the Sharks on Sunday in St. Paul. What are you thinking for the week? Um, I think they're going to win them all. Honestly, I do. I really do. I'm feeling good right now with where they're at. All regulation wins? Are we looking overtime? I wouldn't be surprised if one of them went to overtime. Probably, you know, I'm going to say St. Louis. St. Louis, okay. I think they're going to come out hard against Nashville. Mm -hmm. There's a lot on the line. And like I said, I've always said I feel the wild. There There it was again. I always have said this. Why do I keep saying that? You've always said it. I always said it. The Wild play their best <laughs> hockey when their backs are against the wall. Right now, they're trying to creep into that wild card spot. Nashville, St. Louis ahead of them must win games. So because of that mentality, I think they're going to take them all. Yeah. I. It's not because I'm trying to disagree with you. I just I, I get so nervous. Although, let me point this out. If they win in Carolina, I, got, I nailed my prediction for this week. Um... Because you just said that, it's not going to happen. I know. I'm nervous about San Jose, and I shouldn't be, but also I look at it as you go back to the Ducks game. You go back to Buffalo. Like, teams that they should beat, they've struggled against. So I'm going to go... predicting a Kaylin Addison revenge tour Oh, or or a Nico Sturm revenge tour. I forget about Nico Sturm. Yeah, yeah, he was part of that, too. Nah, I don't think he has that dog in him like that, though. Definitely doesn't have that dog in him. Kaylin Addison, I think, takes names. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see Kaylin Addison. Mm Mm-hmm. Awkward. Awkward turtle. I'm here for it. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) They're going to lose to... I think they're going to lose to San Jose, unfortunately. I'm going to go two... Oh, it'll be an overtime loss. I'll give him a point. Okay. OTL two... Okay, that's what we're going to go with. Let us know what you guys think. Again, let us know any comments, suggestions, all of that good stuff. Um, We're going to take a quick break when we come back. Bryce Brodzinski from the University of Minnesota Gophers. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce. Now you guys know I have been on my weight loss journey thanks to my friends over at Livia for the past couple of months. They have helped me drop 30 pounds and counting but I have been stuck on this last 10 to 15 pounds. And how frustrating can that be? I'm following the nutritional guide plan that me and my Livia Center in Woodbury have started. One-on-one support has been incredible, but it's hard not to get frustrated when you can't break down some of those biological barriers that make losing weight so hard. Well, guess what? Livia has a new medical weight loss option that will help you get through those barriers. It's going to help push you through the end to your goal weight. I just started with Livia Medical, which includes GLP-1 medications to help support losing weight, uh, eliminating that food noise. Just started that on Thursday, looking forward to move, using that moving forward and finding out how it can help accelerate and help eliminate some of the problems that come with weight loss. Couple that with your regular Livia nutritional plan, and it's going to be fantastic. I am so excited to be on this. I'm so excited to see the pounds start to come off get through some of those frustration levels and be a happier and healthier me. I want you guys to feel that visit Livia.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA. Ask them about the Livia medical and check into how you can get involved with your weight loss goals today. Start your weight loss journey the Livia way. Joining us this week, Bryce Brodzinski, a two-time Buttes guest. Now, welcome back, Bryce. How, how are we doing today? Good, yeah, it's been a little while. I think junior year was the last time I was on here, so it's been a little bit. Good to be back, though. 
I mean, you were high request. We requested you very highly because you are you've, you're kind of funny. I don't know if you know that you're kind of funny. So good for you. That's a that's a prop to you. Yeah, well, it's not hard with some of the guys on our team. Some of the guys on our team are very funny, so kind of have to be at the top of the list. Who's the least funny? Like, who is there somebody that tries to be funny, or are most of the guys just pretty chill and quiet on the roster this year? I don't know. I think some of the guys that try to be quiet are the funniest because when they speak up every once in a while, it's always something super funny. So, um, no, I guess we don't have any that that aren't funny at all, but some of them that try a little bit too hard. I won't. I won't get into specifics on who they are though. <laughs> who who would you say is the best locker room personality? Kind of going along the same note. Um, I don't know. We got a lot. I mean, it's it's kind of a, a pick and choose kind of day. Who's going to be the one speaking up a lot? So, um, I mean, Jackson Nelson. Anytime he wants to say something, is always super funny. And um, my favorite guy to talk to is actually Aaron Hugland, just because like he, whenever he speaks up, it's always something super funny. And um, you know, he might not even be in the conversation. You'll hear him giggling in the background because he's listening to your conversation. So uh, he's definitely one guy that I like to to hear laugh in the locker room. And a quick follow-up to that too. Where do you rank in that mix? I don't know. I think it's. I'm kind of. I think I'm in the middle because I think half the team thinks I'm funny and half the <laughs> team thinks I'm stupid for some of the stuff I say. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would probably rank myself somewhere in the middle. How has the team in the locker room really chemistry come together to help what you guys are doing on the ice and the season? Just give us a quick breakdown of how my Gopher squads. Because I know that drives Kirsten nuts when I when it I drive the Gophers. Hey, um, it probably drives his family nuts too. St. Cloud State <laughs> family. It's not just me. <laughs> Just, just drives my dad nuts. I think he's a he's a Saint Cloud guy, and mm -hmm. everyone else in my family just likes playing hockey. So yeah, that's uh, fair. Yeah, just for that, so. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, our, our chemistry's been great. I mean, it's um, you know, kind of when I first got here, it was kind of more clicks where it was like you kind of stayed with your age group, and now it's everyone hangs out with everyone. So um, yeah, it's been really good. I mean, a lot of the freshmen are are fitting in super well, and um, you know, super you know they mingle all the time, and so um, yeah, I've been loving the group that's coming in. With the way that things ended last year, how much hunger <clears throat> is there? And is there any boiled over kind of frustration? Because it had to have been one of the more heartbreaking losses, in, certainly in your career, but with some of those other guys too, because I know it's one that Brock Faber now with the Minnesota Wild still says, man, I, I just can't get past that one once in a while. Yeah, I mean, it sucked. I mean, it's, um, you know, kinda, it kind of makes you question why you love the game a couple of times. And so it's it was, you know, there's that 50% I want to get back at it because I want to get back in that position and that 50% like, gosh, that sucks. I feel sorry for myself. So um, it's, you know, it was a tough hump to overcome and um, you know, it, it took us a little bit, a little while. And, you know, once we kind of did it, um, you know, it was all steam ahead. And so, um, yeah, it kind of took a little bit before you kind of, you know, you remembered why you love the game. And um, you know, once you did it, it was kind of back to normal and business as usual. And taking a look just kind of at the college hockey season, we're getting real close to March, almost tournament time. Where would you evaluate where your team currently sits? I think we're in a good spot. I mean, um, you know, based off what we did the first half, I think we're, um, you know, putting ourselves in a good spot right now. It's, um, you know, if we would have kind of kept going on the trajectory that we were first half, we would have been in a pretty bad spot. And so I think we've kind of turned things around and, you know, we're getting good at the right time. And just kind of you mentioned turning things around. What do you think was the turning point for you guys from earlier this season to now? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, first half, I think everyone was kind of, um, you know, you had guys like Logan Cooley and Matthew Nyes and, you know, Snugger having, you know, 60 point season. So you kind of get that feeling that you're going to have to, you know, kind of repeat on that. I know Stuggy kind of, um, you know, was gripping a stick a little bit tight, thinking that he had to do that again. Otherwise, it was a failed season. And, um, you know, once they started just playing to win and everyone kind of bought into the systems, it was it was less about getting points and more about winning games. And that's when our points started to happen. And that's when we started to get good. You would mentioned a couple names that are familiar now on the NHL scene. Who do you cheer for? So if you've got Arizona versus the Wild, are you still cheering to your you know hometown state team? Or are you cheering for Cooley? How do you cheer for the different teammates that are now spread out through the league? I think it's more. I want the game to be seven to seven, and they both have seven <laughs> points. So, no, I don't. I don't cheer for specific teams. I'm. I'm more so cheering for players. So, um, you know, wherever all my buddies are, that's where I'm cheering. That is definition. I just want everybody to have fun. Like that yeah, is... it's like a, a total mom answer when both their kids are on different teams. See, I would choose. I would pick a kid. Like, didn't your mom had to? Your mom secretly picked one of you kids. She was like, you I know, know what? I think my I... mom. Well, it was different. When me and Easton played, Easton was at St. Cloud, so my dad picked St. Cloud, so my mom picked Minnesota stuff because she knew it would even out. But 
Um, I don't know. I think she just wants wants both people to score when the other person isn't on the ice, and she'd be happy. That seems fair. You talk know, about, take a sec, too, to just kind of talk about your family dynamic. I got to know Easton at St. Cloud because we were there at the same time, Johnny a little bit. It's got to be fun just having a hardcore hockey family. Yeah, it's super cool. I mean, it's, um, you know, in the summertime, you don't have to kind of find friends that are, are working out and where they're going to be working out. You kind of do everything with your family. And so, um, yeah, it's been good. I mean, uh, Michael finally retired, so he's back at home now. So it's kind of good being able to have somebody close and somebody home for Christmas. It's been just me for a little while. So, um, but yeah, I mean, always having somebody, somebody always on TV to go watch and get to go home. And my mom's got four TV set up to watch all my brothers. So, um, yeah, it's always good to see them. Well, and Michael married a hockey superstar in and of herself with, with Danny. Now she get in on the, the hockey chirping and, and games that I'm sure you guys play frequently when you are all together. Yeah. I mean, it's always her that I'm texting whenever we're going to go out and do a family skate to see if she's coming. So, um, yeah, it's, um, even when she would come skate with us and it'd be, you know, 14 pros and her on there, you wanted her on your line just because you know that she was going to make the best plays out of all of them. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely cool having her in the family. And as you guys have grown too, and you know, kind of, we talk about sibling rivalries when you're younger and just kind of maybe throwing a sibling in net to take shots at them. How has that evolved the older you guys have gotten? Um, I mean, I'm bigger than probably all of my brothers now. And they still decide to pick on me just because I'm so much younger than them. So, I mean, it's it hasn't really changed. It's just more so now that, um, you know, they kind of know that I won't do anything to them just because I'm still honestly kind of scared of, of at least Michael because he kind of picked on me the most growing up. But, um, yeah, it's more so turned into, um, you know, it's kind of jokes now where back in the day they might have actually kind of wanted to pick on me a little bit where now it's just kind of it's all fun and games. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's. It was honestly good that they did that. I mean, it, it taught me the right way to be and, um, you know, definitely grew our friendship as we got older. Were you snitching on them, though, when they did do something wrong? Because that, that would be another reason that they would have to just be extra hard on you. Like, Bryce was always telling mom on us. Yeah, see, I would tell my mom just about every single time, and my mom would <laughs> yell at me to get tougher, so there was nothing <laughs> I could do anyway. So, uh, yeah, they, there, there wasn't a lot of help, especially in, in some situations where I think my parents kind of knew, like, hey, just toughen up, where it, it was more severe situations they might step in, but it wasn't too often that it was severe. I was kind of a whiner as a kid. <laughs> Rice was just out here fending for himself. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, since we're talking about kind of chirps and, and why I don't think whining's the right word. We talked to one of your friends, Brock Faber, um, trying to get some inside dirt. And, and Brock is a very nice young man, right? He's not telling us a whole lot. He did say, I really, really need to ask you about summer softball. And why do you think that you can only hit home runs? And why are you not okay with doing anything other than home runs and dingers? Yeah. Uh, well, I think the problem is that he doesn't like to hit home runs. Well, doesn't like to hit home runs, but he can't hit home runs unless we have all the wind in the back. And I've always been a guy that's like, why am I going onto the rink if I'm not trying to score a goal? Or why am I going to softball if I'm not trying to hit a home run? I, I think it's, uh, it's more so like kind of funny to see people's reactions, especially like last summer, there was one where we kind of ran out of home runs, but we were winning by enough. So I just kept hitting home runs to get out just because I thought it was super funny. Um, but some of the guys on the team don't think it's very funny anymore. So yeah, I might. I, I think I might be off the team this summer now, just because I kept doing that too much. Were you bat flipping too, and like doing the cocky, you know, saunter over to first and around no, the plate? No, it was it was the the cocky. I've been there before. I think that that kind of got the fame. So um, no, I think he he was always he was actually probably my favorite softball player to play with, just because you kind of he made everything thing look a lot harder than it actually was on the baseball field. So Brock, not so good on the diamond, is what you're saying. Really good but he made it look really hard. So yeah, no, he, he actually had a, the like becoming wild came to our game and he had that diving catch in the outfield to win the game against uh, like Besser's team in the playoffs. So, I mean, he, he's, he's just so athletic that he makes those plays, but he sure does make it look hard. What do you think? He, so you mentioned he makes softball look hard. Do you think he's better hockey player or softball player? Oh, I mean, he makes hockey look easy, but I did make him fall in practice my junior year, so that was probably like the highlight of my career. So I remember I faked middle and went wide and he fell over. I might probably caught an edge or lost an edge or something, but I'm gonna say that it was my move that made him fall over and 
I think it was probably like two and a half weeks that I let him hear it, that that happened at practice. So I might have to text him and bring that up again. I was just about to say, do you remind that, uh, remind him of that from time to time? Just keep it in your back pocket. I might have to I'm gonna put it in my text app and then close out my app. So next time I go in there, it's going to be in there. <laughs> I would hang your hat. You'd mentioned a group chat where you guys get to chirp faves, which I'm sure you guys are certainly talking smack amongst all of you. But the facial expressions, we have firsthand seen this, and I will send this over your way, Bryce, so you can you can see it too. Kirsten was talking about Taylor Swift, as she tends to do. And again, it was a classic Brock Faber, like, huh, okay. And like, just didn't know what to say, didn't know how to react. Not rude at all by any stretch no. of the imagination, but I just played in my head over and over again because it was so funny. It was just so, it was just so Brock. That's a common thing that he's had since college, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's... It's funny. We have uh, we went on like a golf trip last summer. It was kind of all the all the gopher guys from you know years past, and so we had probably you know fifteen to twenty of us. So <clears throat> every time that that someone sees the picture on on the internet, they'll send it in. And there was one last week. He had like four different screenshots of him doing it, and like eight people sent it in at the exact same time when every, when it went on the internet. It was so funny. There were all different pictures. It was it was really good. You're, I'm, you know, I'm not going to lie. I literally saw that exact same post where there was a frame of four different Brock yeah, facial expressions of Kevin Gord. Yeah, so funny. But he's like looking in all different directions, wide eyed. And yeah, he's he's a different character. He's really funny. I almost want to ask him, do you think it's like the contact situation, you know, because he wears glasses so much. And like sometimes I feel like his eyes are extra wide when he's not wearing glasses. Like you don't get those expressions when he's got the spectacles on. Yeah, I mean, I think my my senior year maybe last year maybe my junior year we had an interview together and um i was telling you guys about the hair in his face he he kind of had it i think he had his glasses on in that one and he was kind of wide-eyed so i think it's uh well he does it in between periods a lot so it might just kind of be a thing to get his eyes going and i don't know if it's his contacts or what but it's definitely funny every single time that we see it yeah i was gonna say when we had brock on the podcast last season when he was still with minnesota and the sp facial expressions he was giving he was wearing glasses and i I'm still convinced he thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> he does. Yeah, I, I he do. does. And you know what? I embrace it. I think it's funny. Yeah. He's, he's funny. Meanwhile, I cringe and uh, I don't know. I, whatever. Uh, so breaking up quick. Bryce, what are your thoughts on Taylor Swift? <laughs> I don't mind her. Personally, I don't, I don't know. I sort of, I think it's funny how like, because I, I never, like you could probably ask anybody, like I don't get upset about anything. Like mm -hmm. people like Johnny Sorensen, he was my roommate. He like would try to do things that bothered me knowing that like nothing would bother me. And so like he would always kind of start arguments and do all these little things just to try to get me going. Like but, what? Like, yeah, like little cool. pet peevey things or like I need yeah, an example. Yeah, he would try to do things that would like annoy most people. Like he would like, there's only one thing that I don't really like. And it's when people like come into my room and leave my door open when they leave. So like he would do that. But I like wouldn't say anything to him, even though it would like annoy me. And he like hates that like I, nothing would really fire me up. But yeah, I, I think it's like super funny when people get upset about things that don't matter at all. And so like mm -hmm. people, seeing people like get upset that like Taylor Swift's like kind of the face of the NFL now is like kind of funny to me. So like it doesn't bother me at all. It's it is hilarious. Do you hear Taylor Swift on the Ox in uh, in the Gopher Room this year? Uh no, not really. Actually, it's it's been kind of well. Connor Kurth runs our Ox, so it's okay. really really bad music. So <laughs> I think Taylor Swift actually has pretty good music. So it, it hasn't been on there yet. I was, was going to say that's my challenge to you is to just surprise everyone, steal the ox, play one song. Um, but what kind of songs are blasted in that gopher locker room? Um, it's such a weird mix because like half of it is Connor Kirk, like rap music that like three people in the locker room like. And then somebody like Justin Close will like yell at him to play country or like throwback country or something. And then um, it'll be like John Mayer or something on. So it's like a really weird mix of like. <laughs> things 90 97 percent of the people like and things that three percent of the people like do you have just one person in control for the entire season or how does that how do you designate the dj uh it's usually whoever just gets to the rink first and like wants to hear music so it's like okay. if no one's playing music whoever's there just kind of gets on it and so that i mean it's fair. it's usually everyone's kind of too lazy to do it because you don't want to be by your phone and changing music all the time where kirthy wants to hear his music all the time so he's always in there doing it do you guys want to hear a fun side story that I just heard the other day? So we were talking to Ryan Hartman about different protocols and how the league has kind of changed, you know, going off of John Tortorella's comment about young players, whatnot. 
he had said when he was in Chicago and Marion Hosa was there and a young player, like a kid they had just drafted, comes into the locker room and Hosa was in charge of the Ox in the locker room, right? The kid comes in, unplugs it, and plugs his in, doesn't say a thing, and all of a sudden Hosa's like, what the hell is that? And like he's like, who are you? And like he literally looked at the kid, he's like, who are you? I don't even know you. <laughs> and, and Hartman was like, needless to say, he uh, he didn't make the team the next year or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like he was down in the A after that night. So now that li- is living in my head rent free, like don't touch the ox at any yeah. level, right? Yeah, That's we such kinda, a power move. <laughs> we kind of tell the freshmen to stay away from it just because we don't know what kind of music they like, but like we realistically never enforce it, but they also never really break that rule. So yeah, um, yeah, it's 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 pretty it's pretty much counter Kurt just because no one else wants to do it and he's willing to do it, but. I think we're kind of cracking down on him getting on the Hawks. <laughs> he's got to get better. He's got to step <laughs> up his game, I'm sure. Yeah, he's either uh, got to step up or get out of the way. <laughs> you got to put it together a playlist then. If, you know I, what? Just I, put together a little something. I have like a 300-song playlist, but it's like only music that I would like, I think. so. Mm, like what? What are we vibe into? It's like I have like a 300-song playlist, and there's probably like 20 different genres in there. It's just like... Nice. I'm like a lyric guy, so like I don't like really care about like voices or like beats. I just like if the lyrics are good, like I really like those songs. So yeah, um, yeah, I kind of have a, a playlist with a bunch of different songs in it. I love that. What would be your goal, Selly song? Say you you guys make it to the national championship game again, which I'm cheering for you to do here in St. Paul coming up in April. What would be your big goal celebration song, or what's the winning song that you're playing? Um. I don't know. We have, uh, so Rhett Pitlick brought in Honey for like one of our first games after Christmas and like was like passing around because like Honey's like really good source of like energy. And um, everyone was calling him like a worker bee because like he <laughs> works super hard. So we were like calling it worker bee. So like we, everyone in the locker room, we call each other worker bees now. And so like after the song, when we win, we play I'm a bee. And like that song, like I'm a bee, I'm a bee, oh, that, that song. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of been our win song, and it's kind of been piggybacked off Rhett Pitlick bringing us all honey in the locker room. So, um, yeah, I mean, we call we call Rhett the worker bee, and we're all, um, you know, just bees in the beehive. So, um, yeah, that would probably be our song this year. This sounds like a perfect T-shirt in the making. Yeah, <laughs> it honestly would be pretty good. We should talk to Soda Stick about that. We should get that right. rocking and rolling. Uh, before we let you go, predictions for the rest of the season. I know you guys have your bye week this week, uh, but what are you looking forward to the most in the coming weeks as you do start to wind down the regular year and look toward, uh, hopefully, the Frozen Four in St. Paul? I mean, just sort of getting another chance to win another game. So, um, you know, kind of here on out, just hopefully win every single game the rest of the year. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Forget about St. Cloud. They're not making it anyway. We could. Oh, you want to chir- throw another hush. chirp to St. Cloud? Unnecessary, time man. Yeah, they, they won their tournament last year, so mm-hmm. I mean, they, there's always a chance. They're they're the ones that take down until they they lose. All you have to do is get into the tournament, and they're currently up there in the pairwise. So I'm just saying. Well, that's like uh, UMB, like however many. I think it was my the year before I came into college, so 2018, 2019. They're like. They got in like 0.2%, got into the tournament and won the national championship. Mm-hmm. So, That's all it takes, know. Jesse. That's right. Go Gloves. Uh, anyway, <laughs> thanks, Bryce, as always, for joining us. You're the best. Good luck the rest of the season. Enjoy this week off, and uh, we'll check in with you soon, I'm sure. Awesome. Thank you. Near, 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 near.